I just got the most fantastic news. The Triumph 17 and the Convera 11 finally had their little baby and they're calling it the Ride 13. Let's introduce this little guy to you. If this is your first time on the channel, my name is Brendan and I like to put on two inch shorts, run around the neighborhood, maybe a singlet if I'm feeling nice to my neighbors, come back in here, talk about the shoes I ran in, the gear I ran in, my experiences with running, share it with you fine folks. So if that's something you're into, hit that subscribe button right down there somewhere. We're coming back to you very regularly. And while you're down there, you might as well defeat that YouTube algorithm by hitting that like button. Thank you guys so much. It really helps the channel a lot. All right, guys, let's get right into the Ride 13. I am so excited about this shoe. Now, I've ran in the Triumph 17 and the Saucony Endorphin Pro so far from Saucony in 2020, and I love them so much that I had to go buy this singlet to commemorate our marriage to Saucony. But of course, we're still gonna be running in other shoes, but they have a hold on me right now. I love what they're doing with the foams. It's, it's fantastic. So, Giving you guys a very quick spec rundown of this guy, I take a size 10 and a half men's and I went true to size. No fit issues whatsoever. Like my heels nice and secure, no issues right there in the size. So if you're looking at picking this up, definitely go to true to size, it worked for me. Hopefully it'll work for you as well. This guy right here, 10 and a half, is weighing in at 302 grams, something like that. I think that's like 10 point something ounces. So I'll put it on the screen right here for you guys down in the US of A. It has an eight millimeter drop, 32 millimeters of stack height in this heel, 24 in the forefoot. I think that's eight millimeters. You'll have to excuse my math. It's getting quite hot in here. So my brain's starting to fry just, just a little bit. All right, now let's start with the upper in traditional fashion. We have a, an engineered mesh with these 3D printed overlays using that form fit technology that Saucony's been putting in a lot of their uppers this year. And you know what? I am enjoying every other shoe that has it on it. So I kind of expected that I'd enjoy it in this shoe as well. Now, starting off back here at the heel counter, it's quite firm. It's a, a, a very built up heel counter. So if that's something you don't like, maybe avoid this shoe right here. For me, I really appreciate having that nice scooping mechanism on my heel to keep it in place. Something I really enjoy. And as Saucony has been putting in their Triumph lines and their Freedom lines, they have this memory foam-like material back here as well. I believe that was in the previous iteration of the ride as well. Now, I will say that if you have the Triumph 17, you're not going to get as much memory foam back here, which is very welcome for me on, like I said, like days like today where it's 37 degrees Celsius. I don't really want that big built-up memory foam. For me, this is actually the perfect amount. I wish that the Triumph 17 would actually have implemented something along these lines that is just a little less plush, but who knows, maybe they'll do that in the next iteration of the Triumph, Triumph 18, if they're gonna continue along those lines. Moving down to the tongue, it is a, such a plush, plush tongue. It's just like the Triumph 17 in that regard where it's very built up, beefy tongues. That's kind of a downside for me. I don't really like that big, plush tongue on days like today. Maybe I'll appreciate it down in the winter time, but it definitely gives you that nice lockdown along the, the upper of your foot. So I guess that's okay. We have the, tr the laces just like the Triumph 17 as well, the stretchy ones and the looping. I'm, I'm gonna stop comparing it to the Triumph 17 because I wanna do a actual video about that. So stay tuned for that one. If that's something you wanna hear about, just let me know in the comments section down below and I'll try to answer as many questions as I can for you guys. Now, moving down to the toe box. The toe box is so, so breathable. That's something I was kind of nervous about. I read online the previous iterations of this shoe were kind of hot, but I took the, the hair dryer to this guy and blew the air in there. And 
and my feet felt all of it. Honestly, I, use, I actually compared it to some other shoes that I have around here and this shoe actually won the breathe, breathability test using the hair dryer. So I like that. Now, if you haven't run in sock knee shoes before, you'll notice that they have this like kind of this built up thing around the toe box here. Don't know if you can see that. Um, and I don't really know why it's there. Only guess would be to keep the shape in the toe box so that the material isn't laying completely flat on your foot to keep the airflow a little bit better. If anyone knows why they have this kind of built up toe, toe box thing around the edges here, just let, let us know in the comment section down below. But with all that said, I have to give this upper a three out of four, taking off some points for the built up tongue and the laces. But other than that, it's very breathable. I appreciate the memory foam a lot. So I have no real complaints other than that. Now, keep in mind that this is just the initial impression. So we will, of course, come back to you guys after a little bit more miles in this guy. And I'm just spoiler alert, we're gonna be doing a lot of miles in this shoe. Very, very much enjoying it so far. But let's tell you more about that down here when we move to the midsole. So the midsole is a full power run foam midsole. And guys, Saucony's foams this year is just on another planet. The Power Run midsole has that same little bit of cush, not as much, a little bit more responsive, but it keeps my gait cycle just a little bit quicker. I find the turnover in this shoe with this midsole was just very smooth. I don't know exactly how to explain it other than it just felt almost effortless. Like it wasn't, I wasn't having to work to get my feet off the ground. It was just like a nice tick over effect, which I really, really appreciate it. And because this foam is just a little bit more responsive and firm than the Power Run Plus midsole, I didn't find that my overpronation was as bad. So sometimes with high stack height, very cushiony shoes, I tend to roll my ankle inward a bit more. For this, it has a little bit more of a stable ride, I'll say. I don't, but there's no real stability in it. It is a neutral shoe, but it definitely feels a little bit more I don't know, supportive, I guess, than the Triumph 17 Power Run Plus midsole. But I don't know, let, let me know your experiences down below. Have you run in both the Power Run and Power Run Plus midsole? Let me know your experiences down below. I'd say the Power Run midsole in this shoe here is more reminiscent of the Power Run PB midsole foam in the Saucony Endorphin Pro, where my gait cycle is just a little bit less effort. That, that's all I can think about here, but the midsole, I am enjoying it so far. Like I said, it has a little bit of responsiveness. I'm not getting sunk into the shoe too, too bad. And it's the gait cycles transitioning very easily. I'm liking it so far. You're doing something well, Saucony. And for the midsole, we're gonna have to go with four to four. Loving the Power Run midsole. Oh, I, I'd have to say it's, it's definitely my favorite, I think. The Power Run PB is great, but I can't run on that all the time. Power Run Plus, it's a little, a little too cush sometimes. The Power Run, the sweet spot. Now moving on down to the oat sole, and I think this might be where a lot of the magic happens for me in this shoe. They're using this tri-flex groove cutout system here, but there's really like three and a half because there's one down here and like half of one up here, but we'll, 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 it's more sexy to call it a tri-flex than a, I don't even know. But anyway, I think this is where a lot of the magic happens for me. And essentially what this does is just allows the midsole to flex a little bit more as you're going through your gait cycle. So I think that's why it feels a little bit less effort than the Tron 17, which is just a very like, it's literally just a slab of power run plus midsole foam, where this is like a nice groove. It allows you to transition and there's no meta rocker, or whatever they call a speed roll. Of, I don't know what, Saucony's calling their meta rocker system, but there's nothing like that in this shoe. It's just a nice curve up and a little bit of groove system to help you get through that cycle. And I definitely do notice that. I, I really, really like the triflex system here. Great, great thinking on your part, Saucony. I don't know if this is in previous iterations. This is my first year running in Saucony shoes. So who knows? There's a lot of rubber on here. So I don't think there's any be, gonna be any concern with the durability for this one right now, who knows? But I will say, I think they put just a little bit too much rubber on. I think that's something they could improve on for the next iteration. You know, it just seems a little bit overkill, but what do I know? I'm, I'm no shoe engineer. But I will say, because of the Triflex, I'm not gonna dock too, too many points for that. We're gonna go for 3.75 out of four for the Oatsole. 
really enjoying this so far. All right, so overall, this shoe has really, really impressed me. There's no real bells and whistle in this that will make it like buzz marketing, but I think it's just a real solid shoe. The Power Run Plus midsole is fantastic. The upper is like everything I love about the Tri-17, minus what I kind of was annoyed with, like the beefier stuff, the less breathable material. Love it. The oat sole, the Triflex technology is, I, well, I personally would buzz market that because I really, really am enjoying that. And I think this shoe, I, I, I hate to say it so far, but right now, this might be my favorite daily trainer option in 2020. For me, it's just above all the rest. I thought the Trion 17 might be the go-to, but as the summer months came up, it just got a little bit too hot on my piggies. Now, the Tri the Saucony Ride 13 will retail at 159 Canadian. I think it's like 130 US. So it's, I think, a very, very great value for that price, in my being honest. If I got the prices wrong, I'll put them right here for you guys. I'm going to use this shoe as my daily trainer option. I feel that I'm able to do the tempo runs that I need to do sometimes. I can use it for slower runs. For those recovery days, yes, I'll still go and grab for the Trion 17, but for everything else on my daily runs, we're going for the Ride 13. I'm telling you right now, I'm loving it. So if you're someone that really appreciates a nice firm yet kind of cush ride, a little bit of a more built up upper with like supportive heel cups and honestly just a very plush tongue definitely consider this shoe this is just the first impressions we're going to be coming back to you probably end of next week with the full review after we put some more miles into this shoe thank you all so much for tuning in if you haven't already please hit that subscribe button i'm gonna that's the last time i'll ask and i will catch you on the next video see ya